My name is Abu Abdullah Ziauddin Ahmed. I'm a physicist and I'm with Brack University since inception in 2001. I did my master's from the University of Russia in physics in 1960 and we belong to the first batch of physics graduates from that university. And then I went to England and I did my PhD in 1965. The field was high energy physics under nuclear physics. So basically, I'm a nuclear physicist or particle physicist to start with. Unless we go for technology and scientific research, technology development and scientific research, we cannot bridge the gap between the developed countries and our country. So that is the only way to build up our own technology, to do our own R&D work, and to do to be, to, be, to be able to do those things, what we have to emphasize on is to do and promote the study of basic sciences uh, like physics, chemistry, biology, uh, statistics, mathematics, all these things. The importance of physics, uh, just to emphasize on that point, I will read out uh, something, some, some quotation. Uh, which was given by President Lyndon B. Johnson of the States, United States of America. I will just read it, quote, It is for this reason we saw President Johnson of the USA rushing straight to the American Physical Society meeting in the USA after attending the funeral of the Chancellor Conrad Adenauer in West Germany in 1967 and was heard to pronounce in the meeting, quote, I wanted to meet with you because no group of Americans is more important or has more to offer to our country than the American Physical Society. So that is the view of the President of the United States of America about the physicists of America. This was in 1967. So what he said in 1967, I think almost 50 years later, I think it is still true. The level of physics, a level of physicists of Bangladesh compared to the other countries, neighboring countries or the Asian countries, I think as uh, the other countries, for example, if you take the neighboring countries like India, Pakistan, China, Vietnam, I don't, I don't take Tokyo. Tokyo is, I mean, Japan. Japan is far, far advanced. But even if we take the cases of these countries, a lot of emphasis is given on physics, and uh, they have made tremendous development. Uh, in physics and physics education because they have not, like ourselves, they have not neglected basic sciences. You see, unless you do basic sciences, uh, stagnation will set in, no, no new ideas will come out. So you have to do basic sciences, which includes physics. Physics should be taught right from the secondary stage up to the tertiary stage and there is a dearth of good teachers at the school stage, at the college stage and, and uh, also at the primary, uh, at, the, at the tertiary stage, that is the university stage. But I think uh, physics education should be, should be, should be encouraged and then I think we can cope with the advancement made by the physicists uh, of the neighboring countries. But I must add here that the people, the expatriates, Bangladesh expatriates who are working uh, abroad, 
some of them have done tremendously well. And you know some of the names, like Zahid Hassan and Salman Khan. They have, they have taken physics to a new height and uh, have done tremendously important work in the field of physics. So given an opportunity, I think our, our people, our, our students can also excel. Physics is the basis of uh, most of the gadgets and equipment and whatever you are. For example, this WW, the website, as you know, that was invented by the CERN scientists, the physicists working in CERN in Geneva. So, biophysics, for example, that was started by physicists. So, physics, physicists can do a lot for the country. But for that, you have to give, you have to give proper incentives. The leadership thing, I think this is not only limited to scientific field, but this is leadership crisis is, I think, is, is almost in every field. In Bangladesh, what we are facing is a crisis in leadership, whether it's the field of politics, whether it's a field of science, whether it's a field of education, whether it's a field of anything, I mean anywhere, you see there is a crisis of leadership. So we have to make leaders, and they have to be ethical leaders, and for that we need, what we need is the re-establishment of our moral values. Let us come to the energy production. We all know that we have renewable sources of energy and non-renewable sources of, source of energy. But non-renewable sources of energy like fossil fuels, uh, these are being depleted. And after some time we will we'll not have any of these sources like coal, oil, gas. Uh, the other alternative amongst non-renewable is nuclear energy and as you know Bangladesh as we all know that Bangladesh is going forward with this program for nuclear energy uh, nuclear energy is a clean energy uh, the only problem uh, is the waste disposal that is the I think that is the basic problem how to dispose of the radioactive waste but lot of research is going on all throughout the world how to how to solve this problem otherwise nuclear technology is a very good option uh, for energy crisis and I must tell you here that uh, nuclear energy whatever when nuclear energy that we talk about is based on fission reaction uh, for fission I mean we have these nuclear reactors throughout the world uh, and they are based on fission reaction. But there is another source of nuclear energy which is fusion reaction, which is the reaction which is taking place in stars like our sun. Now fusion reaction in an uncontrolled way is hydrogen bomb. But to have a controlled fusion reaction that has not been I mean, we have not been able to achieve that as yet. We have not been able to control fusion reaction. So, once we can control fusion reaction, we have a controlled fusion reactor, there should not be any dearth of new energy for all of mankind. A uh, lot of research is being carried out in all developed countries, and in the future, Hopefully, we'll be getting this fusion re reaction also, we can control it and we'll not have any shortage of energy for hundreds of years. If you go to the renewable source of energy, the most important is solar energy. As we all know that sun is the source of all energy, 
whatever energy we have, sun is the source. So solar energy is definitely environment eco-friendly, there's no pollution, nothing, and a lot of work is, is carried out, not only in the developed world, but also in developing countries. Even in Bangladesh, a lot of work is going on in solar energy. Uh, and that's, that's certainly one of the most important uh, sources of renewable energy. And we have no dearth of solar energy in Bangladesh. But there are other sources of renewable energy in Bangladesh, possibilities uh, like uh, wind energy, uh, like uh, tidal energy, wave energy. So these are all possibilities. Even we can we can have energy from biofuels. So these are the possible sources of energy. But I again go because I am a physicist I'm a, for that matter I'm a nuclear physicist. I go back to nuclear energy and I will plead for nuclear energy in, from another perspective. Because nuclear energy is a high technology thing. And when you go for nuclear, te nuclear technology, you know what we will do? When you build up, we go to this high technology, we will develop the other technologies simultaneously. So it will have a spin of benefit. Though it is capital cost is quite high, but along with the development of nuclear energy, the other technologies like material science, like cryogenics, like instrumentation, like electronics, these technologies will also be developed. And the spin of benefit will far, far outweigh the capital expenditure. So that there's a lack of coordination. Maybe we have data. Let us take the sector of water. This sick water data exists in a lot of different organizations, but there is not no real good coordination amongst these organizations, so they cannot always effectively share the data. If they could have done it, I think there would not have been a, any problem. We could we could we could develop more. But I'm I'm sure that Bangladesh has the potential. And the political leaders, the leaders of the country, they should realize that science and technology is the only thing which can take this country forward. Bangladesh is not a very rich country. So my basic philosophy is that if we have a facility, a an expensive facility in one place, maybe a research institution, maybe a university, then I think it should be open to other people. For example, we have a reactor in Atomic Energy Commission, at Atomic Energy Research Establishment in Shava. It's a three megawatt Triga Mark II research reactor. So that is a central facility. That is not only for the scientists of Atomic Energy Commission of Bangladesh, there should be opportunities for other people, other researchers working in universities. And they should be able to use that, that, that uh, reactor for their research. I've seen this in other, other countries. For example, in Germany, I had been to Zurich in Germany. They have a research reactor there. And people from, university people from Munich, from Aachen, they are using this research reactor. In Grenoble, France, they have a 57 megawatt research reactor and that is being used by universities and other organizations. So any central facilities facilities which are which are there in, 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 in this country, I think other researchers from other institutions should be able to use that facility.